Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 Update, April 19, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for reporting. All videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Here are the current trajectories. Nothing surprising here. The United States has no over three quarters of a million cases, and there are now almost two and a half million cases worldwide. If we zoom in on Canada here, we can see Canada's growth compared to the other big countries, and we seem a little bit flatter. Here are the reported cases per million population. You can see Canada is under everybody and roughly about the same trajectory as Germany. Here are the percentage of deaths. The highest in the United Kingdom at 13.38%. The lowest Germany at 3.16%. Canada is about 4.5%. If we look at the absolute numbers of deaths, the top number is the number today and the subsequent numbers below are the subsequent uh, preceding days. And I guess the question you have to ask here, are, are we seeing a trend down? Have, have they fallen in a few places over the last three days? Like in Canada, perhaps, the United States, Germany, there's been a bit of a fall in Italy. Uh, one could argue a little bit of a fall in France. The question is, is this weekend reporting or is this real? Here are the deaths per million population. You can see Canada is still just under the United States and hopefully still flattening. Here are the reproduction numbers, nothing new here. Same story, everybody is still under one. If we zoom in now, though, uh, on uh, day 38 here, uh, which is uh, where Canada is right now, you can see actually we're ahead of Spain, actually, in our reproduction number, uh, closing in on Germany. One thing I don't like about this graph, everybody else seems to be falling in terms of reproduction number, and Canada is uh, level. So we'll have to keep an eye on this over the next uh, week or two. So our new cases per day, everybody's on this side of the curve, hopefully starting to come down with reproduction numbers less than one. Here are the new cases per day, Italy, Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada under everybody else. Here are the daily deaths, Italy and Spain, again, it looks to have peaked, Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, and then Canada again, still under everybody else. We had 1,430 new cases uh, in Canada today. So we're grinding along. Here are the provincial cases. This is all of Canada, almost 35,000. Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, just over 10,000, and Quebec, about 18,000. Now, I wanted to know in Ontario where all of the cases were because we don't have many around us in London and about 60% of the cases in Ontario come from the greater Toronto area. I went through all the health units in Ontario tonight to figure this out. Here are the rest of the provinces. Everybody is flat with the exception of Nova Scotia. That is growing along. Here are the cumulative deaths. Canada with almost 1,600 deaths now. Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec. And you'll see that Ontario uh, has almost 600 uh, deaths now, and Quebec has over 800 uh, deaths. So let's talk about masks and the spread of COVID-19. Now, most patients with COVID-19 are infectious in the early days of the disease, during which they may have few or no symptoms. The purpose of a mask is not to protect the person wearing the mask. The purpose of a mask is to protect other people around the wearer. And that's called source control. We're trying to stop the spread of the virus at the source. We're trying to stop the virus from spreading from the infected person to other people through the use of a mask. There is data that shows that non-medical masks have been effective in reducing transmission of influenza. There's also data that shows that non-medical masks have been shown to be effective in small trials of blocking transmission of coronavirus. So is there any other data that we can look at? Well, let's take a look. So let's start by looking at the Czech Republic and Austria. This is the Czech Republic. They implemented mandatory mask wearing very early on. They didn't get very many cases, and they're, they're doing very well right now. This is Austria. Austria diverged from the Czech Republic early on until towards the end of March when their numbers started to fall. Now, funny enough, at the end of March is when Austria implemented mandatory mask wearing. So you'd think the fall in Austrian numbers would be due to the wearing of masks. But is that really the case? 
I'm a little bit skeptical of this just because the cases, the numbers of uh, daily cases fell so quickly at this point in time. You'd think if you implemented mask wearing, there'd be a bit of a lag before you saw the effect of it. So I thought, well, let's look at another country, say Australia. How are they doing? They didn't implement mandatory masks. And there's Australia. So Australia's done well without masks. Well, what about a country that wears a lot of masks? What about Japan? Okay, so here's Japan. There's Japan there. And they wear masks all the time in Japan, even before COVID. So that doesn't really make much sense. While the Japanese numbers are growing, they're all wearing masks and everybody else is falling. Now for fun, I put Canada on here and there's Canada. You can see we're much higher than these other countries. We look good compared to the big countries, but not as good compared to the Czech Republic, Australia, Japan, and Austria. Now clearly something happened uh, over here in March. Something went on here that caused these curves to fall and us to diverge and Japan to start diverging. So the question is what happened in here? Let's look at the provincial cases because it's the same story here. We look at Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec. Now if you look at British or sorry, Quebec, they started to take off right here and diverge here. Something happened in here in the numbers of Quebec where the virus started to spread and we got more and more cases. And if you look here in Ontario, same thing. Something happened in here in Ontario where Ontario started to diverge from Alberta and British Columbia. There's none of these places is there mandatory mask wearing. So should I wear a mask? Well, if you're already appropriately social distancing, then wearing your mask probably has limited benefit. If you're in close quarters for prolonged periods of time, then a mask would seem prudent. For example, if you're on an airplane, cruise ship, a nursing home, a conference, or a funeral, then it may be worthwhile. However, the only reliable way to ensure everyone wears masks appropriately is to have everyone wear a mask every time they're outside of the home. Now, I don't think it would really be a bad idea if we all wore masks. If someone told me I had to wear a mask, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Some people would, would worry about the stigma and perhaps the cost because they're not cheap, certainly, these days, but it wouldn't be a terrible thing. All right, let's go on to the graphs from John Byrne Murdoch from the Financial Times. The first three are going to be the total number of cases and deaths. The last three are going to be the daily uh, cases and deaths. Take home points from the graph here. This is the total number. United States is now over 750,000 cases. Turkey is still having a rough go and battling a severe outbreak. And Japan and Singapore are still growing. This is the uh, number of deaths, cumulative number of deaths. Take home points here. United States death toll is still rising quickly. United Kingdom is trending just above Italy. And Canada is unfortunately still growing slowly. Now here are the subnational numbers of deaths. Take home point. Everybody is still grumbling along, growing slowly. New York now has the highest national, highest sorry, subnational death toll. Let's look at the daily numbers. Okay, this is the daily number of cases. Take home points here. United States and United Kingdom seem to have peaked. Still, the Fab Four, Austria, Norway, Australia, New Zealand are still doing well. And Japan is still chugging along there, growing slowly. If we look at the daily death tolls here, take home points. It's too early to say if the United States and the United Kingdom have peaked yet. Australia, Norway, and Austria are still success stories. Brazil, Turkey, and India are our emerging markets. They're in the green there where they're all still growing. And you wonder if Canada's in there as well, because we're slowly growing still with our daily deaths. Here are the subnational regions, okay, and the uh, daily deaths. New York daily deaths seem to have peaked. London, England also looks to uh, be peaking, but the daily deaths are trending up still in many United States. So remember, folks, it's now more important than ever to hold that line. Visit Collins Clothiers, get your awesome hoodie or t-shirt to support small businesses or frontline workers. Go to collinsclothiers.com under Canada Strong. Again, you can visit Bill at thephysiotherapyroom.com. If you want to get a mask, if you think it's a good idea, just talk to Bill. Hey Canada, this is Bryce McConnell Barker, an OHL first round draft pick. And I'm here to remind all Canadians to remember to hold the line, stay home, stay safe, and save lives. Thank you. Do your part, flatten that curve. Stay home, stay safe, please save lives.